Alright, it's devlog number two. Lots of things have changed since the last, even though it's only been around a week. And as I said, the main changes I was to make involved upgrading Unity as well as restarting most of the project. However, I didn't make it very clear what I meant by reset in the previous video. Primarily, I was to remove all currently in-game resources, enemies, and NPCs and such, as most of them were in place just to test or work on the systems they were based upon, but they weren't all balanced they didn't feel like they really had a place in the game. I'm going to keep all the code for them obviously, but I just want to rework the main story and the main way in which the game is played, and this is why I'm doing this. So, step one of the week's progress began with deleting most of the in-game sprites. I did this because all of my sprites were exported in random sizes, and were also drawn in random sizes. A perfect example of this is that the player's body is 256 by 256 pixels, while something like the crown worn on top of that sprite is around 800 by 800 pixels. This was an issue, as the scaling of objects was very mixed and sometimes this caused many weird bugs. So I knew as a priority the next versions were to have sprites exported at the exact size they were made in, so every in-game object was pixel perfect in comparison to the others. Along with that, I cleared all the different scriptable objects associated with the sprites I deleted to make it easier when properly making weapons in the future. For each of these scriptable objects, I created a default version that I could use as a reference when creating the actual ones in the newer versions. I did the same for the NPCs and enemies, creating a prefab marked as default that I could modify to create the first actual enemies when the time came. I deprecated the entirety of the biome system as I knew I wanted to rewrite it in a tile-based format in the near future. Finally, I wrapped it up and it was time to send it off to Unity 2019.3. I upgraded to the Universal Render Pipeline, and upon booting the empty project for the first time, I imported the Experimental 2D Lighting Kit and set the Render Pipeline asset to the Experimental 2D Renderer. I also updated Photon, which hadn't seen an update since June of last year when the project originally began. I finally imported the project and began playing around with the 2D light. The use of a Global Light 2D, part of the 2D Experimental Lighting Package by Unity, was of immense help. Previously, I had used a 3D directional light and I was rotating it using a bunch of confusing quaternion code to create the day-night cycle, which tended to glitch and unsync across clients when playing with friends, as well as a system lacking a moon in that cycle. The new system has two Global 2D lights, both a sun and a moon. It cycles between both, with a ton of easily modifiable variables to change the speed and thresholds for each light to reach. It's very easy to change, and syncing it is so much easier to work with. From here, I went on to rework the player's sprites, animations, and even the scripts of the new player. I redrew the player's sprite a little different and exported them in their actual new size. Since the sprite sizes were exported correctly, I had to completely redo each of the animations because the old player was scaled much differently. The beauty of the new system was that all the sprites would be in the same scale so that animations could be easily reused and such. However, this didn't work without some immediate issues. Following this, I decided to combine the entity script, used by the enemy to track health, with the player script, using all the health systems from the entity script, which the player script now derives from and intertwining it with the players. This meant that scripts like the projectile script only had to deal damage to the entity script, instead of me having to write separate code for the player and entity script. This also meant that all entities will naturally interact with each other. From here, it was simple to combine the entity part script with the player part script which I completely rewrote from the ground up. This is a script attached to the main body and weapons of enemies and players, and it handles collision and calling damage functions to deal actual damage to the entity. Since my player and enemies are now both considered entities, it was super simple to morph the entity part and player part script into one in a much more efficient manner. Following this, I rewrote the entity data, entity, and active entity scripts to remove dependencies, clean up variable names, and just generally make the code more readable, along with removing unneeded variables and methods, but I'll spare you the rest of the details. The second to last thing I achieved for this week was the creation of a debug menu, only accessible to players with the usernames tagged as a developer. This is how I gave myself an in-game crown and glowing particles, which are unattainable to normal players but only to usernames I tag as developers, and I mean come on, you knew I had to do it. But back to the debug menu. 
It allows me to change all my different stats and do different things such as enable god mode to test enemies. This is very useful and I'm sure I'll expand upon it very soon. The final thing changed in this week long quarantine devlog was saving the values such as player camera size, speed, the health when they last played, and max health. This is useful as I can add ways to improve your player's speed or even max health and the game will remember this, which gives a whole new way of rewarding players. With this, I re-added a rating feature for players which had been in the game previously, then I had removed it, but I have now added it back. There is currently obviously no way to improve your character's star rating, but that will be a future thing, I hope. Oh, and I moved the player's health info to an actual point on the screen from the client perspective, because the previous way was clunky and it felt like it got in the way a lot. Anyway, that's what I got done in this week. I want to say a quick thanks to the much support my last video received. And I actually have five written on my script for the new amount of subscribers, but since I had written this, two more of you have joined, so a special thanks to you seven. And I know, there was a lot to go over in this video, and I'm sure I'll figure out a better way to format the way I talk about changes I made, as this video had a lot of information. However, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a week or so.